Hey guys, it's me, 80s144. So today, guys, we're gonna do our weekend preview, guys. We have a lot of good games this weekend, guys. A lot of good games this weekend, guys. So, like I said, guys, there are some really, really big games this weekend. So we have a lot to break down in this video, guys. So this will be a short video, guys. Probably hopefully around 10 minutes-ish. And today we'll be discussing about the five games, five of the biggest games of uh, European football this weekend in the top five leagues, of course. So we're gonna start off with the Madrid Derby. The Madrid Derby is always huge. It's always gonna it's always a huge game, guys. So I actually want to check and tell you guys about the uh, insights leading up to the game. Um, then obviously the uh, the win probability for both teams. So on Google, it states that Real Madrid's expected to win is 53%. Draw is 25%. Atletico Madrid is 22%. The uh, timeline for this one. Um, Real Madrid have just lost one of their last 13 games against Atletico de Madrid in La Liga. Um Win six, draw six, one nil row on the road in May 2022. Atletico Madrid, Madrid have lost each of the last three visits to Real Madrid in La Liga without scoring after winning points in previous six games a road against them in competition. Real Madrid have just lost two of the last four games, uh, last four games against them, against sides from Madrid after losing just one of their previous 15. With while Atletico Madrid are winless in the last three such games after winning their previous five, Real Madrid have won their last two La Liga games and they could win three consecutive games of competition for the first time since October 2022. Atletico de Madrid have not lost any of the last six La Liga games in uh last six games of La Liga, their longest unbeaten run this season in this competition. So I think coming into this game, guys, I think the key thing for Madrid is that they're gonna come into this game in full motivation. Obviously, then with them thrashing Liverpool midweek in the UEFA Champions League, they're coming into this game with full confidence. You know, they're coming into this game with full confidence, and I think they, they should feel confident, right? You know, this is their rivals after all. Atletico Madrid this season have been very, very underwhelming. They haven't really been that great this season, Atletico Madrid. They haven't been bad, per se. I wouldn't say bad, but they've just been underwhelming. I think underwhelming is the right word, you know. And obviously, injuries to, like, um, Regulon and Rodrigo de Paul is a big blow. For Real Madrid, though, injuries to Rodrigo, Mario and Diaz for Lamendi, Alaba is really, really big. And, yeah, like I said, guys, Real Madrid, man. I, I expect Real Madrid to win this, and they really honestly should. Um, and I am going to go with Real Madrid to win this. I'm going to say they win this. I'm going to say they win this 2-0. Um, I think goals will come from Benzema and Vinicius Jr. Guys, I think Benzema and Vinicius will both score their goals um, to make it 2-0, guys. 2-0 win for Real Madrid. Next we have, it is Chelsea. It's Spurs Chelsea. Whoa. This is going to be interesting. So, let's go ahead and talk about the insights coming into this game, guys. So, Spurs, Chelsea. So, on Google, it states the head-to-head -head record between the, well, the win probability is Tottenham is 38%, draw is 29%, Chelsea win is 33%. Tottenham have just lost, um, Tottenham have lost all three of their home Premier League games against Chelsea and Tottenham Hotspur Stadium by an aggregate score of 6-0. They've lost two of their previous 13 at home against the Blues before their move. Chelsea are beating eight Premier League meetings with Spurs while they're looking to just become the third team to win four consecutive away league games against Tottenham after Arsenal between 1952-1955, Manchester United 2001-2007. Following their 2-2 draw at Stamford Bridge in August, Tottenham are looking to avoid defeating both Premier League meetings with Chelsea for the first time since 15-16 season. Only once have they taken as many as four points from the Blues in a single Premier League season, only doing so 2008-2009. Tottenham are beating Man City West Ham 2-0 in the last two home league games, having lost four of their previous five at home. Spurs haven't won three consecutive Premier League home games against, um, haven't won three consecutive Premier League home games without conceding since April 2019 in the first three matches at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Yeah, this is a very interesting one, guys, because Spurs guys this season have been very, very kind of they they've been very it's been very tricky to gauge. They're very unpredictable. They're very peculiar, you know. And I think the thing with Spurs is that. They're a team you just don't know what to expect. Sometimes they can play like really good, and then sometimes they can play like crap. They're such an unknown team. Chelsea, on the other hand, are just cursed at the moment. I, I don't know what's up with Chelsea. They seemingly cannot score. They're, 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 they cannot score to save their life. And I think the thing that worries me if I'm a Chelsea fan is, who's going to score the goals for me? Because there is no reliable goal scorer on the team. And your best player being Kai Havertz is being... um Not Kai Havertz, sorry. Joao Felix is a big concern because as good as he is, he's not that goal scorer. He's not that consistent. And we've been seeing it for a while now that for these last couple of games, he's been missing big, big chances after all. And, you know, you losing to Southampton over the last weekend is coming into this game in dreadful form, you know. 
Now, the thing is for Chelsea is that they do have a really good record against Spurs, you know. Um, let's look at the injuries for both teams. So, Basuma is going to be out for this game. Sassanyon is going to be out. Ben Takor, Lloris is going to be out. Conte, Edward Mendy, Pulisic, Aspilicueta, and Broha. Spurs not even playing with their first choice keeper, um, Hugo Lloris. They have Ryan Forster in goal. If Chelsea cannot score against Forster in goal, I don't know what to say. Because th this is such a winnable game for Chelsea. And like I said before, guys, Spurs this season, we don't know what this team. It's a difficult game to call, guys. I am really not sure what to pick for this game. I'm going to sit on the fence, and I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw. Um, I just feel as though that um, Chelsea should. I feel like Chelsea will create a lot of opportunities in this game, and they should win this game. But I just have a feeling Spurs will just equalize out of nowhere. I feel like Chelsea will actually take the lead, and the Spurs will peg them back in the second half. And, Spur and Chelsea will just be disappointed, man. Hopefully, um, for Chelsea's sake, I'm wrong, you know. Next up, it is um, Bayern versus Union Berlin. This is a massive, massive game. Huge game, guys. This is a huge game in the Bundesliga, guys. Huge game. Because I believe this is a t uh, first versus second place. So, looking at the table right here, guys, the Bundesliga, guys. Bayern is currently top of the table with um, how many points? On 43 points. Actually, Union Berlin is third. My bad. Not second. 43 points as well. Level on points. It's coming down to goal difference. Byron's goal difference is significantly higher. Union Berlin, man. This is a huge, huge opportunity for them. So let's actually look at the head-to-head -head record. So Byron versus Union Berlin. So Byron. Um, the FC Byron are beating against Union Berlin. The Bundesliga win four, draw three. They've only faced Rot well over Surrey and St. SV Durmst. Both eight times more often than top flight without ever losing. FC Beer are the only current or the only current top flight side that Union have never managed to beat. For for FC Bayern have just won 12 of the last 21 Bundesliga games this season. They managed a few wins, uh, as few wins of the stage 2000-2011, when Dorma went on to win the title. FC Bayern just picked up 9 of possible 18 points from the 6 Bundesliga games. They take a maximum points from the final 6 games of the league 2022. Union Berlin have taken 16 points the same period since the start of the calendar year, with only Dorma managing more, 18. Union Berlin have won each of the last three Bundesliga away games, equaling the club record. They have scored at least twice in each of their away matches, equaling another club record in the top flight. FC Bayern have the best defensive record in the Bundesliga this season. FCU, the lowest expected goals against in the league. And um, yeah, so it's going to be very interesting. This is a very difficult game to call, guys. A very, very difficult game now. Now, we have to take in consideration players that will not be available for this game. Dai Upamakana is suspended for this game. Obviously, he picked up a red card. Um, and the previous game, I believe that was to Borussia Mönch and Gladbach, of course. Byron's bogey team. And for Union Berlin, man, in particular, I've been super, super impressed with this team. Super, super impressed with this team. This team has been sensational, to say the least. Now, my concern with Union Berlin is that they played midweek. And I think their midweek game against Ajax, um, this is being recorded after the Europa League, by the way, when they obviously progressed, I think that's going to be on the back of their heads. You know, obviously, with the you know players not being at their full motive, full fitness level, and obviously Byron having not played any games this week, so they're going to be coming to this game with more match sharpness. You know, um, Upa Mukano is out, Neuer is uh, Neuer is out, Lucas Hernandez is out, Busca is out, and Schaffer, man. So for this one, man, it's going to be very difficult because, like I said, guys, Union Berlin they don't score a lot of goals, but they're defensively very, very solid. They're very good defensively speaking, guys, and this is a very tricky one to call, guys. A very tricky one to call because I'm looking at the head-to-head -head record. Union Berlin never won. And a lot of the games I've seen with the head-to-head -head has been very close or Bayern wins by a significant score. You know? And so that's what I could see happening is that it's either going to be a draw or Bayern's going to win this by a big margin. Like, that's what the um, insides are coming into this game. So for this game in particular, guys, my prediction, I think I'm going to go with a Bayern to win this. I think Bayern will win this 2-0. As much as I want to see Union Berlin get a result here, Maybe get a draw potentially. I just feel like Bayern from here are just too good, and I feel like them not playing midweek is going to really help them a lot. Whereas Union Berlin, having having played, I think they're going to come into this game not be as sharp um anything. So I'm going to go with Bayern to win this two 0 Hopefully, I'm wrong. You know. Uh, the next one we have it is Marseille PSG guys. Huge, huge game guys. Huge game in League One guys. What a massive game this is. What a massive, massive game this is guys. So, PSG, man. Let's go look at that insights coming into this game. So, Marseille. Oh, I forgot to tell you the win probability. Uh, Bayern, 72% for 17% um, draw. Union Berlin, 11%. Marseille, PSG, man. 
huge game. So coming into this game, guys, a win probability for Marseille is 35, PSG is 39, draw is 26. Insights. After the 2-1 win in the French Cup on February 8th, Marseille have the opportunity to win two consecutive games in all competitions against PSG for the first time in the Qatari and the KSI era since 2011-2012. For the second season in a row, Marseille and PSG will face each other in the second fixture of the league one season while being in the top two positions. This is the first in the same fixture since Home M and PSG. Yeah. Marseille have had seven wins in league one since a post-World Cup return. Only Monaco has many in the same over the period. Marseille have only earned 44% of the homes in League One this season, their second lowest ratio behind Asasio. Um, PSG have conceded at least three in their last two League One games, a first since February 2020. PSG have not had a longer such run since January to February 1985. Yeah, guys, coming into this game, guys, I've not been impressed with PSG. PSG defense looks very, very suspect at the moment. They're defensively not very well organized. And as we can see, guys, with Marseille, man, they're just feeling so motivated at the moment. You know, and obviously this being their rivals and everything, I think Marseille is going to prove her points, you know. And if there was opportunity to beat PSG, it would be now, you know. Because like I said, guys, coming into this game, PSG is not going to have Renato Sanchez for this game. Mukieli is going to be out. Neymar's out. Marquinhos is out. And Hakimi is out. Now, while Hakimi and Marquinhos may recover in time for this game, there is no chance for the likes of Mukieli, Sanchez, and Neymar. For Marseille, on the other hand, Harid is out and Gugu is out. You know, and as I said, guys, I think this is a big opportunity for Marseille. I think Marseille honestly could win this. Um, and for PSG in particular, man, they need to pick up their form because you look at the league table in particular, guys. PSG is top of the table with 57 points. If Marseille manages to win this game, it's only a two-point gap. Uh, you know what, guys? I actually think Marseille is going to win. I think for me, PSG at the moment just look very, very defensively well on, unorganized. And I feel like Marseille is going to take the game of scruff in the neck. And because this is at their stadium, I think they want to prove a point. So I'm going to say Marseille narrowly wins this one goal to nil. With a goal coming from Dimitri Payet, of course. Who else, man? Who else? And then the final game, guys. The final, final game I'm going to discuss about, guys. It is Atalanta versus Ace. I mean, sorry, AC Milan versus Atalanta. Huge game, guys. This is a ma massive game. Huge, huge game for top four, guys. Let's go with in the insights coming into this game, guys. So, coming into this game, guys, AC Milan um, are currently, let's see, they're currently uh, fifth, I believe. Yeah, I think they're fifth in the, the yeah, sorry, Milan's actually fourth. Adelante's at sixth right now. And the point margin between the two teams is very close. Milan is on 44 points. Adelante's on 41 points. Okay. Win probability for Milan is 44%. Draws 28%. Atalanta is win is 28%. let us look at the timeline in this one. AC Milan are unbeating the last four Serie A matches against Atalanta. Three wins and a draw in the reverse fixture of the season. The Rosanari could play five consecutive league games without losing against a Berger Mascari for the first time since 2008-2012. AC Milan won two in the last home Serie A match against Atalanta after a run of seven consecutive games at San Siro without beating the Berger Mescari. The last Rosanari managed to win two home games in a row against the two consecutive leagues Campaigns was Fabio Capolo. AC Milan have won the last three matches all competition with each with a 1-0 win. The Rosen ever won four games in a row this season. Last time they did was the end of the 2021-2022 campaign. And last time they enjoyed more consecutive wins without conceding goals was in February 2018. Five in that case, three in Serie A and two in the UEFA Europa League. AC Milan picked up just one point in the last four um, uh, four matches against side in the top six position Serie A table at the start of the match day. The last such win was against Inter, 3-2 win September 3rd, 2022. Atalanta have lost three of their last four matches in all competitions, having earned four wins and two draws the first six matches of 2023. The Mariski have won the last league match away from home. They went two consecutive home matches on the road in Serie A for the first time since September 2022. Four in that case, San Siro. I think coming into this game, guys, AC Milan have looked defensive as well. I think Milan have seemingly picked up form, and I think this form is coming into this in good form, you know. And I think the key thing for this game for Milan is they have to keep their composure. You know, be defensively solid. Because you can see with this attack that as good as Milan is, I don't think they are really a high-scoring team. They're not going to score many goals. Adelante, on the other hand, are a really high-scoring team. They can score an abundance of goals. Now, I do believe Adelante this season is more... Um, more pragmatic than in years past. So I don't think this team is as free scoring as it used to be in years past. Although I still think they still have a lot of those quality players. You know, for Milan in particular, injury wise, Ben Acer is going to be out for this game. Calabria is going to be out. Uh, Demerol is going to be suspended for Atalanta. P 
Hasledge is going to be out. Hatabor is going to be out. And Zapata is going to be out. So, like I said, guys, it's a very, very interesting game. This one could go either way. Hmm, I think I'm going to go with... I think I'm going to go with the draw. I'm going to say a 1-1 draw. I feel as though Milan really need this win, but I just feel like Atalanta, for me, they're just going to be very um, conservative. And um, I think they'll be able to equalize in the second half. And I can see Adamata Lukman scoring the goal. But, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting, guys. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Your predictions for these games, guys. And also remember, guys, if you're new on here, consider that like button. Hit the subscribe button as well. Consider becoming a member of the channel by clicking that join button. And, of course, share this video with your friends. And, yeah, like I said, guys, check out my other pops in the description below. And, yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.